Okay, let's start off with eliminating some tool features that I know exist already. That is, I've got those building footprints, so let's take them out of the equation, right? Segment based on the buildings, do a segmentation using the chessboard algorithm, and just classify saying all of those segments that have a thematic object ID for the buildings, call them buildings, okay? It's done in a heartbeat very, very rapidly. Now let's talk about contrast split segmentation using the LiDAR normalized uh, digital surface model. This is a fantastic algorithm, much, much faster than multi-resolution segmentation and actually gives you better results. Contrast split segmentation, segments and classifies in one fell swoop. It's really, really exciting. So here I just say I want you to go after all unclassified objects. So setting my image domain, right, I don't want to segment the buildings. I've already taken them out of the equation. I set a threshold, meaning that I'm going to, I want you to segment based on a height of eight. And anything that's taller than that, meaning those bright objects, okay, contrast split, I want you to assign them to a class called tall. You notice I put an underscore there. That's my naming convention for temporary classes. And then everything else, just keep them unclassified. Let's take a look at the result of this segmentation here. The red objects there being the building footprints that I've segmented based on the thematic layer. But look how well that pulls out the tree canopy. Unfortunately, like I said, also does a great job of identifying power lines. So I've got a bit of a situation here that I've got to deal with. But first of all, let's, uh, let's start working with the buildings. Tree canopy is what I'm after, and if a building is under tree canopy, I want to call it tree canopy. So I'm going to run a very simple rule um, to classify using a class description. Let's see what that class description looks like. It's essentially is going to say if you're a building and you've got uh, a high end DVI and you've got a relatively high border to the existing tall objects, I'm going to assign you to this temp class, and then I'm just going to use the region grow algorithm to remove those temporary objects. And I always have these temp classes sitting around that I just use. I assign features to them temporarily and then get rid of them, free up that temp class again. So we've got rid of those buildings that we have there. Okay, we also have some problems with the contrast split segmentation that we've got these little features next to buildings. Fortunately, they're small. They have high length to width ratios and they're adjacent to buildings, so I can call them building edges and I can then just remove them by growing the unclassified features in the background into them and taking them also out of the equation. Okay, now the power lines. And like I said, this was, a, this was about an eight to 12 hour operation. I'm not sure how long it took. Really, really challenging. The challenge wasn't in identifying some of the power lines. Okay, that was really, really easy. We had these features that were very tall and they were long and thin. Unfortunately, the way the LiDAR hit the power lines it didn't map out straight lines, okay? And so I've got tiny, tiny little pieces in there. And those tiny little pieces of the power lines are identical to the tiny little trees that are in people's front yards. Okay, so I run the risk here of either I can get rid of the small trees in people's front yards, making the people that I give the maps to really, really mad, or I can tell them that they've actually got a lot of trees under their power lines, which will make the utility people mad. So no one's going to be happy with no matter what situation I take. So I started with going after those things that I could easily define. Well, I, I've got these power lines here. These are very, very easily distinguishable. And then I ran a looping process, and this is the only part of my that rule set that you saw there that is any way slightly advanced. Everything else is really assigning objects based on one or two parameters. So what I did is I started a looping process that identified power line candidates. Okay, power line candidates are things that were also small and tall. Now power line candidates, I've got a bunch of them in the residential area here, these light purple ones, and then I've also got them scattered out here within the power lines, and here you see that in the image objects below. And so then I used a distance two classification that started building out from my confirmed power lines, the dark purple, into the candidates. Okay, so what this allowed me to do was through iteration, so starting a looping process here, if you're a candidate and you're near a confirmed power line, reclassify you as a definite power line. And so this started building out. As a result, all these candidates that are scattered in the residential areas they're not close enough to the main power lines, so in the end, they don't show up in the final classification. So this is, I was, I was really jumping up and down when I figured this stuff out, because I don't, I don't have a lot of brain power. I mean, I barely got through calculus in college, so the fact that I figured this out was, uh, I was really pleased with myself. So there we've got the power lines out of the picture. Um, that's not enough. Uh, we used to just kick products out like that, but um, people get really, really upset if their trees aren't round. 
Okay, and, and this, is, this is once again, you, you wouldn't find a single complaint among a group like us. You'd understand that, you know, image segmentation, it's, it's, it's really tricky, but you show these maps to someone at a community meeting, they're like, hey, how come that tree in my yard has got all these edges on it? And then they get focused in on that, and they, they stop thinking about everything else, right? Images are very, very mesmerizing to people. So we want to find a way to deal, let me back up here, we want to find a way to deal with these edges here. Okay, and Definians has some great morphology operations. The problem is that morphology is very, very high, uh, requires high memory. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by growing out these features, okay, using a chessboard segmentation, finding the pixels next to them, growing out, shrinking it back down, and then removing some edges with the morphology. So I'm going to run that morphology filter, but in on a much smaller area than I originally had to. So what I've done here is I've segmented the image using a chessboard segmentation on the unclassified areas. And then finding those image objects from the chessboard segmentation that border the existing tall areas. I'm then going to repeat that segmentation moving in here at a very finer scale, so finding the pixels that are directly around the edges of these tall features. So I did a double segmentation here. Why didn't I do this fine scale segmentation to begin with? Because it would be much more processor intensive to do a fine scale segmentation for a large area. This way I've narrowed in the fine scale segmentation to this green area here. Once I have that, I can just do a uh, grow region once again to eliminate that first class. So growing the unclassified into those green objects. And now I can grow the trees out into those. So that's nice, it's expanded the tree canopy a bit, and this is important because LiDAR is leaf off, so it doesn't get all the leaves in there. So now I've made the trees reflect their size a bit more. The downside is that because I used a chessboard segmentation, I've got these square areas. Once again, you know, people get all wrapped up. You know, trees aren't square, what's going on here? What happened with your feature extraction? And they get really, really upset with us. So we run a morphology operation. Okay, we use the uh, opening algorithm there. And so that filters around using a very small circle. We assign these um, uh, edges, little slivers of the tall objects to a temp class. And then once again, we just do a unclassified region grow into those. And so the end result here becomes a much, much smoother, much more realistic depiction of the tree canopy. We then just free up that temp temporary tall class, assign it to a forest class. And to zoom out here, um, th this is you know the classification to date. So you still see that I've got a bunch of work here. I've got to get lawns. I've got to map impervious features and do all of those things. But at least I've knocked out the tree canopy here. The only exception is um, a few of these tiny, tiny little trees here. You can see their shadows in people's front lawns. Uh, I checked the LIDAR, and these are about four to five feet in high. So once again, like I did in Des Moines, I'll go ahead and I'll map those shadows, and I'll just classify the shadows as trees, because people don't care if they can't GPS to the tree. So if it's one or two meters off because I mapped a shadow, they're OK. So, but this is the, the point that I got to. Very long rule set to get me there. But the rule set is very, very easy to understand. Okay, It's just mimicking what a human would do the whole time. And uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the end of the presentation. So I hope you found the, uh, the, stuff, uh, the stuff useful. Um, it's, not, it's not rocket science. I'm just mimicking you know, what I would do in manually interpreting those images. And it's very efficient, and it's very transferable. And mo more importantly, I can process large data sets when I kick it out to eCognition server. Thank <laughs> you.